All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming out on this sunny day. <laughs> if you were here last year at this time, it wasn't sunny. <laughs> but thank you for joining us on Veterans Day 2020. Before I forget, before I begin, I would like us all to turn, face our beautiful American flag, and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Honor Guard, stand up. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, arms. Parade, rest. It is truly a privilege to be here with you again this morning. What I'd like to do is just recognize quickly all the veterans that we have. So if you served during World War II or in the 1940s, if you can, raise your hand. And I know we have some here. I've seen Joe Zadra over here. Thank you, Joe. For those that served in the 1950s during the Korea conflict and during the 1950s, do we have any Korean War vets here? I know we have some, yes. During the 1960s and the 1970s, Vietnam vets. Thank you. Thank you, brothers, and welcome home. During the 1980s and the 1990s, Desert Storm and Iraqi Freedom. There they are. Those that were serving after 9-11 during the war on terrorism. Where are you at? There you are. And all of our active duty members, thank you so much for being here with us today. This is our day, Veterans Day. Now, it is imperative that I use caution today as I speak to you. Not because that somebody's trying to incur, uh, uh, curtail my speech or that I feel somebody's going to rep uh, have repri reprisal. It is because I don't want to let my emotions or my attitude take away from the importance of this day. After all, I do represent the vet veterans, and I need to be mindful of our mission. Our mission statement says to serve our veterans, to serve our military, and to serve our communities. Our communities. I love this community. This community is so veteran friendly. But that's not true all over the place. In my job, I get to travel around the state. And there is places where veterans are really not welcomed. But here, in this community, the support that we have as veterans is outstanding and second to none. I truly love this community. And I will do whatever it takes and I'll do my best to serve my community and make it better. Would you allow me at this time to make a very bold statement? In case you haven't noticed, this has been a very unusual year. It's been a weird year. With all the issues, all the mandates, all the restrictions, and even the events of this past week, all these are enough to drive us crazy. If you know me, seldom do I find myself at a loss for words. But this week, I found it difficult. It was a difficult time to prepare this speech this morning. For days, I had so many emotions spinning around in my head as I tried to write down the words to speak. It would be very easy for me to complain. I mean, I, I could complain. I could grumble, and I'm good at that. I could whine and moan. My wife says I do that. Because of all these issues, I could complain, but I won't much. Friends, every single one of us that raised our hands when I asked about the veterans being here, including me, and every individual who has ever served in the U.S. military has taken the oath, 
I do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So help me God. By the way, those of you that are in elected offices, those, that you, those of you that work for the government have also probably taken that same oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. Those two phrases got me to thinking. That's going to be my theme today for Veterans Day. Support and defend. So help me God. I, I, I like history. So I decided to look for some inspiration from other veterans to see what they have to say. And I found some interesting notes from one particular veteran that I believe are relevant today. I, I kind of paraphrased one of his paragraphs. And this is what he had to say. Obstruction of authority is destructive to constitutional government and will lead to its demise. Thereby, minorities gain artificial political power over the delegated power by usurping authority. Here's a key statement. If the Constitution cannot be overthrown, some will attempt to bring innovations to weaken the Constitution. Do we see that going on today? We got to get rid of the Electoral College. We got to do this. We got to change this. They want to weaken our Constitution and yet we support and defend our Constitution. He went on to say, a wise nation will guard against partisan politics. Rival factions often seek revenge, producing tragedies that lead to permanent tyranny and the loss of liberty. As people yield absolute power to an individual so that they can be relieved of their disorder and misery. Boy, that sounds like what's going on today. Partisan politics distracts and weakens government by agitation, provoking riots and even insurrection that enables foreign influence and corruption. The last statement was, partisanship is like a fire. It's valuable for warmth, but if it gets out of control, it will burn down everything. Those words were said by a general of the army in 1796. George Washington's farewell address, paragraph 17 is where I read that from. Sounds like today a warning for us. My friends, do you agree our constitution is under attack? I'm sure if some of you do, you agree with me, but I realize there are many others out there that are totally disagree with my assessment of things. Now, you can disagree, but don't try to tell me that one group of citizens is more important than another. You can disagree, but don't tell me that we need to defund law enforcement. You can disagree, but don't tell me that unelected bureaucrats have the right to mandate laws support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Are we willing to do that? <laughs> That's easier said than done, isn't it? So how do we do it? Well, I'm probably preaching to the choir today. But we first need to defend our community by staying informed on what's going on in our communities. We need to keep our elected officials accountable at City Hall, at the county level, in our schools, in our school district. We need to speak up and speak out on how and how can we do that if we are not educated in what's going on. We need to support our local police and sheriff departments. It's kind of scary when they all know you by name. We are fortunate to have them and to have them here and serve and protect us in our community. As veterans, we love to have folks come up to us and thank us for our service. But I submit to you that we all need to thank those that are now on the front lines and are now putting their lives in harm's way. This day and age when communities are talking about defunding 
cutting services, redistributing funds. Would you join me as we thank wholeheartedly our police officers, our sheriff's department, our fire department, our EMTs, our paramedics. I am fully aware that many of you feel the same way I do about the way this, the ways uh, events have fo unfolded this week. Many of you are sad and disappointed, I too. But I know that there are some that can't sleep because they are worried. They've told me so. They're depressed, they're disheartened, they're dejected, they're throwing in the towel. Now, we should be concerned about the future, but we should not lose all hope. I am concerned about the future, but I'm not going to let the past events ruin my life. Let, re let me remind you of what we said when we said the Pledge of Allegiance. We said, one nation under God. Have we lost sight of who really is in control? Is our motto in government we trust? In the governor we trust? No! When we swear our oath, we say, so help me God. We are asking for God to help. We are asking God. We are seeking his guidance. If indeed God is in control, do you think that God is up there in heaven looking down at us mortal beings and saying something like, boy, I never see the results of that election. I never seen that happening. No, he is in control. Did it ever occur to you that nothing ever occurs to God? He's not like saying, whoa, I didn't see that happening. I'm gonna have to try to fix that. No. He knows everything. He is in control. Now, I don't, I, I don't know about you. I can only speak for myself, but I truly believe that God is in control. This is not the time and place for me to preach a sermon, nor is it the time and place for me to tell you why I believe why I believe. But it is altogether proper for me to encourage you by stating that God is in control. Fear. Anxiety, depression is very detrimental to our health and well-being. The way we overcome that is by realizing who we are and who God is. Let him control our lives. Let us not forget these words, one nation under God. Let us not forget our oath, so help me God. Let us not forget our motto, in God we trust. The First Amendment was, of the Constitution was put there by our founding fathers that freedom of speech would be guaranteed because it is so critical, so crucial to freedom itself. It is important not to lose focus here. Now, lest I am misunderstood by what I'm saying today, allow me to make a personal statement. I do not know what... What, I do not know what the future holds, and if a new administration gets control, I believe that America could be destroyed. I'm not saying that if we claim that God is in control, and if we claim that in God we trust, that God will automatically make things turn out all right, exactly the way we want it. No, I'm not saying that at all. If you will, allow me to exercise my First Amendment rights of freedom of speech and freedom of religion. When I say that God is in control, I am saying that he is in control whether we believe it or not. What I am saying is for me personally. I am saying that I believe in God's word. I believe that he promises in the scripture that if I truly put my trust in his son, Jesus Christ, he will be with me. In that, I am confident. No doubt there will be difficult times ahead. And it may not be a bed of roses. 
but I know full well in God I trust. I know not what other courses, what course others may take, but as for me, give me God and all will be well with my soul. On this Veterans Day 2020, let me close by saying this. The best way to honor those who have served is to remember and do as they did to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the best way for us to support our community is to defend the Constitution is to support those who serve in our community, our firefighters and our EMTs and paramedics, our police and sheriff's department. Let us not forget our God. It is He who is in control. Thank you for being here today. God bless America. And now what I'd like to do as we continue our tradition, we'd like to face the East. And I'm going to have, uh, ask that we uh, be silent. And as the sirens are sounding, remember why we are here today, to honor veterans and what they have done for us. At this time, we're going to have our traditional three-round volley, followed by the playing of taps. Rifle detail, 10, hut! Rifle detail, 10, hut! Port, arms! Half right, face! Prepare to fire! Ready, aim, fire! Aim, fire! Aim, fire, half left, face, present, arms, bugler. Order, arms. All right, one last closing thing. As we have started doing the last couple of years, we are going to please join us as we sing God Bless America. And I'm going to ask Joel Hausman, one of our veterans, to come and lead us in God Bless America. Joel. i just like to personally thank John for a great message. Thank Amen. you, John. All for being here today. I know it's cold, but it means a lot to everyone that you're all here. Now, if you could, 
please join me in singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank you for coming today. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you.